Preeclampsia is defined as hypertension of at least 140 over 90 millimeters of mercury that is recorded at least two separate occasions in presence of 300 milligram proteinuria in 24 hours. And this arises after 28 weeks of pregnancy in a previously normalized woman. Preeclampsia is more common in primary gravid women or women in their first pregnancy. The risk factors for developing preeclampsia include first pregnancy, that is primary gravid, multiplies with preeclampsia in any previous pregnancy, age of 40 years or more, body mass index of more than 35, family history of preeclampsia, multiple pregnancy, certain underlying medical conditions, and pre existing hypertension, renal disease, diabetes, and antiphospholipid antibodies. In etiology and pathophysiology, Preeclampsia is a multi-system disorder where intravascular volume is contracted due to that of a non-pregnant woman or even less. The part of the involves defective spiral artery remodeling of the placenta which leads to development of placental hypoperfusion. The deceased placenta releases pro-inflammatory proteins into the maternal circulation and this leads to systemic vasoconstriction and endothelial dysfunction by vascular endothelial cell activation. Diffuse vasospasm increases thromboxane along with decreases in the potent vasodilator prostacycline. This vasospasm contributes to intravascular volume constriction and decreased perfusion of most organs, including the uterine placenta unit, kidneys, fever, brain, and heart. Health syndrome, which is known as hemolysis, elevated liver enzymes, and low pressures, then sets in. Decreased renal blood flow leads to decreased clearance of body metabolic wastes and capillary injury leads to loss of intravascular volume into the interstitial spaces that is due to reduced colloid pressure and subsequent edema development. Preeclampsia can be divided into two. Mild preeclampsia, which includes blood pressure of 140 over 90 millimeters of mercury, but that is less than 160 of 110 millimeters of market and there's proteinuria of more than 300 milligrams in 24 hours but is less than 5 grams in 24 hour urine collection then it is asymptomatic in severe preeclampsia we have blood pressure of more than 160 of 110 millimeters of mercury while the patient is on bed rest proteinuria of more than 5 grams or higher or three positives during a dipstick testing Oliguria of less than 500 ml in 24 hours, cerebral visual disturbances, pulmonary edema or cyanosis, epigastric or right upper quadrant pain, impaired liver function, thrombocytopenia, and fetal growth restriction. The clinical presentation of preeclampsia, the classic symptoms include frontal headache, visual disturbance, and epigastric pain. The patients may complain of scotomata, blood vision or right upper quadrant pain. However, the majority of the women with preeclampsia are asymptomatic or merely complain of general vague flu-like symptoms. During a clinical examination, you should include a complete obstetric and neurological examination. Hypertension is usually the first sign, but occasionally absent or transient until the late stages of the disease. Rapid progressive edema of the face enhance and epigastric tenderness is a worrying sign and suggests liver involvement. Neurological examination may reveal hyperreflexia and clonus in severe cases. Your differential diagnosis will include disseminated intravascular coagulation, fatty liver disease, hemolytic uremic syndrome, sclerodema, systemic lupus erythematosus, and thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. A diagnosis of preclamp is made based on two criteria that is elevated blood pressure of 140 and 190 millimeters of mercury on two occasions, six hours of pass, and protein of more than 300 milligrams in 24-hour urine specimen. Examination reveals brief pateral reflexes and eclonus. The laboratory tests and findings will include lactate dehydrogenase, thrombocytopenia, and full blood count ratio falling blood rate count and rising hematocrit. Clotting studies, serum renal profile, and serum transaminases and uric acid. Serum liver profile, 
ultrasound assessment of the fetal size, amniotic fluid volume, and maternal pediatric fetal doublet. Antenatal cardiotocogram can also be used in your diagnosis of preeclampsia. The management of preeclampsia, women with mild preeclampsia are hospitalized for further evaluation and even indicated delivery. Preeclampsia is often managed in women with preterm pregnancies if symptoms are mild to moderate. In severe preeclampsia, it mandates hospitalization of these women. Delivery is indicated if gestational GH is 34 weeks or greater and fetal pulmonary maturity is confirmed or evidence of deteriorating maternal or fetal status is seen. Glucocorticoid can be administered in women with preterm pregnancies and with delivery postponed for 48 hours to allow the steroids improve the fetal lung maturity. These are reasonable to use for viable fetuses or in cases in which the mother's health is at significant risk. Maternal and fetal deterioration requires emergent cesarean delivery. The medications used in management of preeclampsia focus on treatment of hypertension and prophylaxis against seizures. Angiotensin II converting enzyme inhibitors are contraindicated in pregnancy because of their harmful fetal effects. Seizures remain a great concern for any patient with eclampsia, and magnesium sulfate is the first therapy for seizures because it prevents vascular spasm. And prevention of vascular spasm in the brain is believed to protect against seizures, but whenever they develop seizures, it's referred to as eclampsia. Hydralazine is the antihypertensive of choice in your management. Labetero has alpha and beta adrenergic blocking effects and can be utilized to control severe hypertension rapidly.